Welcome back to the show, it's Dr. A. Today we're tackling an issue that students always ask me about, and it's actually not just students that worry about this. Faculty, professors, anybody in academia struggles with this too. Today, we're talking about how to be productive, or another way of looking at it is how to avoid procrastinating. So before I get started talking about this, I wanna tell you that I'm not a pro. This has been through a lot of trial and error throughout my life. I never knew I was good at being productive, but it's something that I get asked often and upon reflecting, I realized that I do have a system. So today I wanna to talk to you about the system that I have to make sure that I maintain my productivity. And there's not one thing that works. There's actually three things that I alternate between and each one of them helps me remain productive and continue to meet my goals. I'm gonna break down these three ways of how I remain productive by the, the problem that they help me solve. So for instance, when time is tight and I just don't have the time to allocate to things, I take advantage of calendar blocking. Calendar blocking is when you go through your calendar and you devote specific hours throughout the day for specific tasks. This way I'm carving out the time to make sure that it exists. So when my schedule gets really busy, like during the semester, I know I teach on Tuesday, Thursday, I knew exactly what time slots my teaching uh, is. So then I go ahead and block out the other times like for research, for service, for meeting with students, so that I create strong boundaries between one task and the next. In economics, we call this specialization. If you specialize on doing something, you're gonna be more productive. So that's the method that I use when time is tight. And I use it for identify when my work day has to end. I'll give you an example. For me, I love working out, but if I don't put it in the calendar, it doesn't happen. It's easy for me to say, hey, I'm too busy, I'm gonna do something else. So every morning, seven days a week, six to seven, I have a workout in my calendar to make sure that I commit to it and nothing creeps into it. Now, do I always stick to it? Life happens, things happen and I have to adjust. I might have a class, I might have a meeting, sometimes things happen, but if it's in my calendar, it makes it difficult for me to overlook it. I also use this approach for reading. So I allocate 30 minutes before bed to reading. So calendar blocking is really important when time gets tight and you feel like you don't have full control of your calendar, start to take control of your calendar. The second method that I use is when I feel like my task list has ballooned and there's so many things that I have to do and I get overwhelmed. In this situation, I use what is called the top three method. I pick three things, I focus on those three things to complete for the day, right? And I actually have another trick there is to get rid of the least favorable task first. Once you get that over with, then you you know, could focus on the second and third thing. A couple of weeks ago, for past two weeks actually, I've been dreading doing this one task and I thought about it every single day. The other day I put it on the top of my list, it took me 25 minutes to complete that task. I have worried for two weeks about this task that took 25 minutes. So the top three method I will use when my task list has ballooned and I feel a little bit overwhelmed by how many things I have to do Picking three things allows me to narrow that down and focus on those three things only. The third method is the Pomodoro method. And this is, I use this for when I don't want to be an adult, right? So I don't know if you have those days, there's days where you're like, I just don't wanna do anything at all. I know I have a lot to do, but I just don't feel like it. And this method requires you to decide on a task, just one task, set a timer for 25 minutes and do that work for 25 minutes uninterrupted. And in the actual method, uh, once your 25 minutes are over with, you take a five minute break and then repeat the 25 minutes again and you do this four times. But sometimes all it takes is one 25 minute iteration and you get the task done. I always tell myself, you could do anything for 25 minutes. So that helps me get these tasks or get started doing things, I just focus on 25 minutes, focusing on that item, and my productivity picks up after that. What I like about the Pomodoro method is that it allows you 
this is for the economists out there, it allows you to reset your production function. We know this concept of diminishing marginal returns. To avoid diminishing marginal returns, you take a break every, five, every 25 minutes, reset, and then that allows you to be productive. You have more productive 25 minutes by taking breaks. So if you're a student and you're really wanting to study but you're dreading getting started, try this out. Just read your textbook or rewrite your notes for 25 minutes. Study for 25 minutes and see what happens. None of these methods are perfect by themselves. You need to figure out what works best for you. And what works for you can change based on the pressures that you're facing in your life. Sometimes the top three method might work. Sometimes the calendar blocking might work. Sometimes the Pomodoro method might work, but you have to try it out. Keep on mixing and matching. One other thing I wanna talk about is the importance of turning off your notifications. I have uh, the system where all of my devices are on do not disturb. I can't get my iWatch to turn off some notifications. I don't know why that's the case, but everything, everything is silent and turned off because I'm so easily distracted and I know that about myself. If something dings, it's going to get my attention and I'm going to stop doing what I do. To figure out what works best for you, you have to really reflect. Try them out, see what worked, what didn't, and then how you would modify it. Being productive requires you to be intentional about your breaks. This is something that I didn't do well in the beginning of my career and as a student. I always felt like I had to be productive, you had to always be working. Now, as I've gotten older, I realize that the best way to consistently be productive is to also allocate downtime. And so I calendar my personal time, calendar block my personal time, because this allows me to have breaks guilt-free. I used to be this type of person whenever I took a break and I'm like, I should be working. But now it's in my calendar and it's time devoted to taking a break and I take it seriously. Be intentional about your mental health or your overall well-being. It will help you be productive in the long run rather than just in the short run. Leave a comment, which technique do you think will most likely work for you. If you've tried them out, tell me what worked for you and what didn't. See you next week.